Meet Matthew Shepard, a 38-year-old pastry chef originally from small-town Missouri and owner of a two-year-old chocolate shop situated in the heart of downtown Hillsboro. Located right next to the Wooden Nickel, this high-end chocolate shop has quickly become a town favorite, luring in both townspeople and tourists since it opened in November 2007. Matthew sells everything from handmade chocolates of several exotic and traditional varieties to wet nuts, brownies, and homemade vanilla extract. Specialty blends of coffee and hot chocolate are also available to customers, but it is undoubtedly the diligently crafted chocolates, in addition to the personality of the owner, that keep people coming back. The many aspects of Matthew's personality are not at all difficult to uncover, as I've come to realize that you get a taste of it as soon as you enter the store. An artist to the core, much of the artwork in the shop that isn't made of chocolate has also been created by Matthew. From the pottery on the shelves in the main area of the shop to the watercolors in the back hallway, aspects of Matthew Shepard's being can be spotted everywhere. Matthew spends a majority of his working days going back and forth from his, this hallway, where you can find small back offices and the kitchen area, to the front of the shop, beckoned by the telltale doorbell that indicates that someone has just entered. People come in to chat about any number of things at Matthew's. Donations for Teacher Appreciation Week, changing phone services, a more lengthy and business-oriented interaction than your typical customer visit, or just to have a look around the display case, curious about the unusual but alluring chocolates that Matthew has created in the kitchen. Watching the chocolate making project is literally like watching an artist work, and just like any artist or your average Joe, Matthew Shepard is prone to being distracted from his art. This was made clear by how inattentive to truffle making he became while I was snapping away with my camera. He went from showing me how to make a pretty basic chocolate confection, basic because he's made them a million times, to having to re-pour ganache into the bowl it was heated in originally because he forgot to add the butter. I'm not used to having people with me in the kitchen, he said. Don't worry, I asked, the truffles were fine. I refuse, however, to take blame for this mistake, as the toils of such holidays as Valentine's Day and Easter left Matthew exhausted. I knew this because Matthew, as I've come to realize, is not one to hide his emotions. Whether on the fa phone or face-to-face, -face, you can pretty much always tell when he's stressed, intrigued, or amused solely by looking at his face. That's just another aspect of Matthew, I'd say. His quirks are shown in his expressions and around the store. Via the truffle fairy that hangs at the store's front, his recipe book warning that theft will result in death, the magnets and notes around the kitchen, and in his interactions with customers and friends like Lisa, who stops into the shop sometimes to help make brownies. You see, it's the little things in the shop and the openness of its owner that bring Hillsborough residents of every age into Matthew's chocolates for a little tour, complete with treats. Whether it's adorable children with their mothers in tow, a teenager reigning in a mother who is attempting to hold true to her commitment to giving up chocolate for Lent, or couples looking to try something new and spread the word about Matthew and his chocolates to family and friends, Everyone leaves Matthew's chocolates happy, with Matthew never being hesitant to take the time to give a tour of the display case, explaining which spices, fruits, and other things his unique chocolates are infused with. It's all a part of the job. But when customers leave, Matthew goes back to the real work of store upkeep, rearranging the display case, using it as a desk, retreating to the kitchen to complete an order, or cleaning up the messes made when it's your job to play with chocolate. During the little downtime he has, he'll take a trip over to visit a friend at the jewelry shop a few stores down on Churton Street, hanging out for a bit to discuss gallery openings and last Friday's festivities before he has to head back to the store. After all, Matthews is not Matthews without Matthew Shepard.